and welcome to another one of my free tutorials. Today we're going to be looking at combo box dependency. And here we notice that we have combo box 1. It has a list of information. Based on what you populate in combo box 1, it will populate in combo box 2. So if we look at fiction, fiction has yellow, blue, red. If we look at romance, romance now lists this information here which this information here, Dark Lover and all this good stuff, is sitting in here. So I'm going to show you two methods in which you can uh, use combo box dependency. So um, let's go to Alt-11. And what we see here is um, in the combo box, we're going to use dim index as long. The index is what's going to hold the value of combo box 1 list index. We also want it to clear the comma box two. Now we're going to select a case. This is how it. This is where the dependency begins. We're going to select a case which holds the value of index, which is comma box one. And based on whatever shows up in the list of combo box one, we want it to populate the following information. So we'll say with combo box two show this information. Now this here is a manual process. If you don't have any plans on changing the code then this would be a great solution but if you are if your code is going to continue to evolve or that form is going to continue to evolve I would recommend that you use this me method which is the second option here which allows you to pull the data from the worksheet and also make it look within that row and count every value that's in that row and so this would be a better better method here. So um, I'm going to clear this out. What I'm going to do is clear these out so you can kind of have an understanding of the code. Um, um, so so let's begin. Option explicit. What that does is that option explicit forces you to declare all of your variables. So I want you to understand why I'm using what I'm using. Okay, I use user form initialize to open up um, the user form. I mean, there's many ways to populate a combo box, but I'd rather use it in the user form initialize, which operates in the background. So when you activate the form, it automatically populates whatever you put in the user form initialize. Of course, you could always um, use a method here which, uh, you know, it's up to you if you want to. You can use row source, and of course you can give your row a name, and then it will also populate it there. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's see, if we go back to the, if we go back to the, the form itself, if I wanted to, um, let me see here, I'm just going to create a row here and call it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I have a six. Oops, six. So just to let you see what's going on here. If I wanted this to, to be a, a row that's selected, we can call it um, and come up to the top, highlight everything here, and call it number, right? And now when I come back, if I select number, it selects everything there. Now, in order for it to populate in this combo box one, like I had mentioned before, you'll come down to row source and put number here. And when you put number here, this is what's going to happen. Go back to the top. So now when we run the program, of course there's going to be an error because it's looking for this data here. So we're going to blow this information here away. Now when we run it, now you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 as it's listed here. Uh, this disadvantage of this is if you make any changes here, it's not going to populate it in the user form, which requires manual intervention and you'll have to constantly keep changing it. And of course if you needed to change it, the way that you would do that is you would go to formulas and go to name manager and right here in name manager of course you could always come in here and edit it and make it become dynamic if you wanted to but 
this is where the information will be changed you know if you want to change them so I recommend not using that menu that's also this is also the way that you can clear this so if you go to name manager you come here and delete this and so now it's no longer here in this drop down so nothing is associated here so let's clear this out I'm gonna go back to the code and we're gonna keep it dynamic so with the width function what we're telling it is we want worksheet one which is this which is located uh, here this is this is worksheet one down at the bottom see that worksheet one and um, worksheet one we want combo box one to list everything within the range of B2 anything that's in B2 we want to list the second range here tells it to look and count for everything and, and, and account for everything that's in row uh, two of column two and count every value so that's all that is saying there which allows it to do this see so it only counts the values that's in there that's populated and that's it so even though you have space after space it's not going to put anything unless if it sees if it counts something being in that space so this is why this is a great method to use that's why I was telling you I can come here and put junk food and it will appear next time I launch the, the form so when we do the drop down look at that see it's there alright so now we're gonna now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna go ahead and create a dependency so the way that you create a dependency is you'd have to click on the combo box one so let me go back and move a little slow this is combo box one right here see that double click on it it opens it up and what we're gonna do is we're gonna say dim as I'm sorry dim index as long all that is simply telling us is that index is the variable and we want it to hold information as long um, long pretty much what that does is that allows for variable involving greater numbers than an integer that's all it does this gives you the ability to do that so now we have dim as long let us let it call index so in the index the value that we want to hold in index is combo box one list index and we want it to list everything that's inside combo box one we also want this to, to clear combo box two um, after an, you go through combo box one and select a different item we want it to clear it each time so that it can populate a new one okay now the next function here this is what's going to call the values and combo box 2 so what we want to do is we want it to select case index which is what's holding the value what it's saying select case based on whatever is in combo box 1 then select the item or make the item available in combo box 2 that's all it's simply saying so in this case here what we're going to do is the first item which is going to be zero within that combo box we want it to look within the worksheet remember we're dealing with sheet one and we want it to look and we want combo box two to list the items that are shown on the spreadsheet so in this case um, <coughs> what we want to do is want to look at the range and we want to look at uh, C2 to C and in that range we want it to count only the active information that's in row or column C
this n xl up dot row is what allows us uh, Excel to do a continuous loop looking for information or value. Once we're finished with that, we say end with. And if we're not going to add anything else, we'll say end select. You always have to close out a line of code when you write it or else there'll be an error. So because I started with select case, I got to end that select process, okay? So now, um, Let's look at what it does. So when I run this code now, if I go here and I type romance, um, nothing happens. If I type fiction, then it populates the information because it's the first item within combo box one and it's looking for the data. Now, um, if you wanted it to look uh, somewhere else and in this case here what we're going to do is we um, we can make it look over here so if I junk one junk two now if we want it to look one two two three so alright so let's get the code back for the second item, simply just copy and paste this whole thing, put it down at the bottom here, and what we're going to call this is we're going to call this the second this, the second item. So the second item is going to be 1, and it's going to be looking at range, but this time around we wanted to look at a, let me go back and look at what this was, I want to look at A3, starting at A3. Okay. So, uh, come back here, say A3, and pretty much all you do is just, just change all the codes to match the row that you wanted to look in. So now when we run it now again, for fiction, it will pull up this information, which is here, because that's what I told it to do. That's the dependency, and if I pull up romance, it's going to pull up junk one and two, which is what I told it to look at over here. So that's how you do that, okay? And it makes it dynamic, because if I add junk three, junk four, and I close the form out and open it again, guess what it does? If I come to romance, see that? It's all in there. If I go to fiction. And so what you would have to do is just build that each time for whatever row you want it to look in or whatever column you want it to look in, okay? So now what we're going to do now is we're going to make this information here um, also make it populate information here in text box 1 and text box 2. So we'll call information. So we, what we're going to do is we're going to let... Uh, let's see. Let's see if I get that correct. All right, so we're gonna let column C call these variables line upon line. See that? Let them follow that, and then when we get to this information, we're gonna let it call all the information from here. So the way that you do that in the code is. go to um, combo box 2 and combo box 2 is what's going to call the data so let's scroll down a little bit and take a look at what's going to happen here so here we got text box 1 dot text equal worksheet now granted, if you had your worksheet and it had a different name, that's what you would put in there. But since we don't have one and we're using the default sheet, that's what we call it. Sheet 1 dot range. And this function here that I'm teaching you here will make everything that you do dynamic, where you don't have to manually keep inputting information. Alright, so we're going to look at row D. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called verified data and we're going to tell it to look at the second um, row within that column 
we'll do this first and then what we'll do is uh, we'll create the variable last actually you know what I'm going to do it's probably just as fast to just copy and paste this alright so in this case here this is going to be what is it E? yeah and so now we're going to create the variable. So the variable is going to be, we're going to say dim verify for data um, as long. And we're going to put what we want the variable to be, verify data. And we're going to say that it's going to be equal to combo box uh, to list the index. We want to list everything that's inside that box, okay? Let me just quotate this. So. Let's um, let's see here. Let me see. So now, in order to make this work, what you would have to say is you would have to say if verify data is greater or less than minus one, then we want it to perform the action below, and then we want it to end if there's nothing else going on. So we'll say end if. And that's pretty much it. So now run the code again. Let's come back up to the top so you can see this. When we select an option, romance, junk, notice that it's, let's see, fiction. Let's see, what is it looking for? It's looking for D and E, so, so I messed up somewhere. What did I not do? D, oh, okay. I see where I made my mistake. Alright, so my mistake in the code is here. So you got text box one and text box two. So now when we come back and run the code again, when we go to fiction, if I select dark lever, see how it did that? It picked up volume one and it says that it's available. If I go to twilight, it picks up volume two and it says it's out of stock. If I go to dead uh, until dark, it picks up volume three, pending. And if I go to dark fever, it goes to volume four and ordered under the fiction. Now, when I pick romance, it's going to do something completely different. So in order to make... Uh, in order to make this thing work properly, what it's essentially doing is it's seeing one, two, three, and four as if it's sitting right here, as if it's sitting in um, row two of column one. So every time when I populate this thing, it's going to populate the next thing down. So does that make sense? Junk two, volume two, out of stock, all that. So that's pretty much how you make um, a combo box call the data. Thank you for watching. I hope that I've shared something that's been ha very helpful. Uh, please subscribe to get more of my uh, combo box techniques and tricks. Look out for my next video. Have a great day.